You ever see something that's not a terrible idea, just needs a few tweaks? Just a little smidge to help it along into being something amazing, like a great meal that just needs a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe some potatoes, because what doesn't go well with potatoes? That's how I feel about the totem system in Dead by Daylight. It's a fun system, one that adds a new level of gameplay besides holding M1 on a gen if you're a survivor, or... Actually, it's only a new level of gameplay for Survivor. Killers don't ever interact with totems unless you're snuffing one out or using Pentimento, but who, who fucking uses Pentimento? But I'm getting ahead of myself as usual. Let's talk about totems. On every map, five totems can spawn. These spawns range from completely random and never in the same place to having three totems always spawn in the exact same place, except when you're playing Survivor and looking for a hex, because that will be the one in one million chances that that one totem that always spawns in the Midwitch library decides it's going on vacation this trial. The totems that spawn are supposed supposed to spawn in a rough pentagram shape, but I once cleansed three totems that were all within two feet of each other, so who the fuck knows. These totem spawns are called dull totems, and they can become one of two types. Hex totems or boon totems. Let's look at hex totems first. Hex totems are colored red, make no noise, and are map-wide effects used by killers to influence certain aspects of the match. The killer cannot choose where these totems are lit, and with the exception of plaything and face the darkness, the totems are lit from the beginning. When the survivor does an action that correlates with the totem's effect, they are alerted by a red symbol on the right side of the screen, and sometimes in the case of things like Devour, Lullaby, and Noed, and more, they are even told which hex it is. Because of the fact that totems are lit from the beginning, you can almost always guarantee that if you were playing killer, the survivors will find it within the first 30 seconds of the match, causing them to last slightly longer than men do in bed. Of course, like I mentioned, if you're a playing survivor, neither you nor your teammates will find any totem, and somehow the killer will get all five stacks of Devour Hope, and now you get to go fuck yourself. The trade-off of hexes being gone immediately upon being cleansed is twofold. One, the survivors have to actually look for them. They make no sound, so as survivor, you have to look in every nook and cranny, unless you're running small game, but nobody runs that unless you're out of maps and you're doing a totem cleansing quest at the same time. And two, the effects are supposed to be extremely powerful. I say supposedly because sometimes they are. Things like Noed, Blood Flavor, Crowd Control, and even Devour Hope with three plus stacks are amazing hexes until, like I keep saying, they get cleansed immediately. But others like Third Sill and Huntress's Lullaby aren't really that good and can provide some value, but generally when running hexes, you have to make entire builds around them using things like Undying or Thrill of the Hunt, but you're going to use Undying and not Thrill of the Hunt to protect your totems, but even those don't always work as you, well as you feel like they should. Boon totems, conversely, are colored blue, make the sound of a fucking jet engine taking off in a Cinemax theater, and the survivors can choose where to place these boons. Finding a dull or hacks to- hacks? Finding a dull or hex totem, the survivor can bless them when done so that special effects are granted within a certain range of that totem. Normally, 24 meters. The problem with boon totems is, instead of just going away when snuffed out, they usually have relatively weak effects, except Circle of Healing and maybe Exponential. Circle of Healing is seen as not only the most powerful boon, but also one of the strongest survivor perks in the game. Killers can stomp out the boon totem, but this doesn't actually break the totem like when it's cleansed. Instead, the survivor will just walk back to the totem and bless it or go bless a different one. Unlike hex perks, there are only foon. There are only foon? Can I not fucking read? There are only four boon perks, so let's just run through them real quick. Boon Circle of Healing. Survivors within the boon totem can heal themselves without a med kit at 50% of the normal healing speed, and if survivors are healing someone else, they heal at an increased 40, 45, or 50% increased speed, depending on the tier. Dark Theory. Survivors within range gain a 2%. <laughs> <laughs> they gain a what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's so bad. Oh, that's so terrible. Oh, my God. This effect. I'm good. I'm good. This effect lasts for two, three, or four seconds after leaving its range. Exponential. Survivors gain unlimited access to the unbreakable perk while in range and are granted a 90, 95, or 100% increase to recovering from the dying state. Finally, 
Shadow Step. While in range, scratch marks and auras are hidden from the killer, and this effect lingers for two, three, or four seconds after you leave the range. Unlike Hexperk, Boon Totems cannot be separated, meaning that if you have all four of these on, for some reason, I mean, Jesus Christ, 2% hates, who fucking runs that? All effects will be on the same boon that you place down, similar to Scourge Hook builds for killers. So, do they need fixing? I've seen a lot of arguments on Reddit about this, mostly ways to buff the killer side of things. People saying killers should get Shattered Hope as base kit, Shattered Hope being a perk that destroys the totem of any boon they snuff out and then shows the auras of survivors within that boon for six, seven, or eight seconds. People have said that killers should be able to choose where to light hexes. Others say that totems shouldn't break when you cleanse a hex, etc., etc., etc. There's a lot of others, but I'm here to tell you that only three things need to be changed, and none of them have to do with boons, except maybe Dark Theory. I mean, come on, make it 5% haste at least. Give the poor bastard something. God damn. Number one. Do not let Hex Totem be lit until its effect comes into play. I think it's exceptionally dumb that Hex Totems can be cleansed before I get any value out of them. Make Lullaby not light up until I hook somebody. Devour doesn't light until he gets a stack. Blood Favor and Crowd Control don't light until their conditions are met, etc, etc. This not only means that you won't lose the Totem before seeing any value from it, but it also means that if the survivors aren't paying attention, they can get caught without realizing it. If your Hex Totem is cleansed, then it can be relit from a new Totem when the conditions are met. This solves the side questing problem that many people have been complaining about, saying that survivors have only one thing they can do, and that's gins, as well as provides more use to the hexes. Number two, fix the spawn rates. Spawn more than five totems. I think seven's a much be better number, but also change their spawns to be more spread out and more hidden. I cannot count the number of times that I've seen them spawn on top of hilltops or in the middle of the street on hat and fuck. The increase to seven uh, for more blessing options and also increase difficulty to find hexes and provide a use for perks like small games and items like maps will also be shadow buffed because they will have more use than just trying to find the hatch for those damn tome quests. And finally, I don't want Shattered Hope base kit. Instead, I want it to take longer to bless a boon after it has been snuffed. That way, the same totem cannot keep getting re-blessed indefinitely. Think of it like Freddy's wake-up timer. Every time you try to bless the same boon, the, to the timer to bless it doubles, and you have to go find another totem. To combat this, however, I would suggest making the sound of the boon totems lower, make it to where they can only be heard from, say, 3 to 5 meters, as opposed to 10 to 12-ish that you can currently hear them from. And that's how I would improve the Hex versus Boon Totem problem. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more Dead by Daylight content every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And let me know down in the comments what you would do to improve Hex versus Boons. Do you like my ideas? Do you think I've been huffing glue? I accept all comments. And if you're a big fan of horror stories, I do release a new horror story on my main channel, Kaiser DeBard, every single Tuesday. So maybe you could go check that out and give that a little love if that's your thing. Anyway, I want you all guys to remember that I... All guys? I want you guys all to remember I love you all and I will see you on Friday.